Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMag TV. In today's tutorial for WordPress, we're going to be taking a look at one of Visual Composer's key options, and that's the ability to create widgetized sidebars. So let's take a look at how we can do that, some of the functions that it offers us, and how easy it is to create these versatile layouts. So as we can see, I've got a blank page already created in the admin of my WordPress, and I'm ready to start working with Visual Composer. So the first thing we're going to do is just click to add an element, and we're just going to specify we want to add a row, and we'll just divide that up into two thirds, one third. Now, I'll just drop a text block in there, so we've got some content in there. I'm not going to worry about putting any content in there, just leave the default filler text, that's fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on this right hand side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and I'm going to choose to input a widgetized sidebar. And that's the option by here. So if we click on that, you can see that'll open up a dialog box that gives us a couple of different options. Gives us the ability to choose what sidebar we want to use from our widgetized sidebars. And as you can see, we've got a range of ones already created for us. And we could create additional ones if we wanted to, if the theme allows us to create additional sidebars. But for now, we'll just use sidebar. That'll be fine for me. And that's, that's all I need to do. I can just click on save and I can just specify that I want this particular theme to be full width with no sidebar because we're going to control that ourselves. And I'm going to hit, I'll well, just call that sidebar. And I'm just going to simply hit publish. So we've created our page. <clears throat> So the next thing we need to do is actually populate that particular sidebar. So if we switch over to Appearance and come down to Widgets, that'll take us through into the ability to change how these particular sidebars are filled out. And as you can see, we've got all the same ones that we had in that drop-down list from Visual Composer. So you can see we've got Sidebar, which is the option that we chose. We've also got Homepage Widgets homepage widget 1, 2, and 3, and the same for Footer. Now, in this particular theme, we don't have the ability to create additional sidebars, but a lot of commercial themes these days will give you the ability to create your own custom sidebars so you can apply different sidebars to different pages. But for this example, we're just going to keep it simple and straightforward, and we're just going to get rid of everything that's in, in this, just to clear it all out. As I don't want any of this in there, I want to control exactly what goes in there. Now, if you're new to widgets, then they are effectively a way of dragging and dropping and controlling certain elements on your page. So you can have widgetized footers, so you can control which particular widgets drop in there. Now don't get these particular widgets confused with the widgets that come with Visual Composer. They are two separate things. These are native options or na native functions inside WordPress itself. Like I say, these are theme specific, so you're going to find that different themes are going to have different options available to you, but Sidebar will be one that should be installed with every installation of WordPress, regardless of what theme you're using. So let's take a look over on the left-hand side, and this gives us the ability to choose all of the different widgets we have available to us. Now again, you're going to see that there are common elements in here, things like archives, categories, links, and so on. You're also going to see things that are going to be specific to a particular theme. And in this example, you see sparkling categories, social widget, and popular post widget. I'm using the sparkling theme, which is a free theme, and these are widgets that come specifically with that. You also have inactive widgets. So say, for example, you create uh, an instance of a widget in one of your sidebars, and you don't want to use that again, but you don't want to lose all the settings the way you've configured that, you can drag that from this right-hand side and drop it into the inactive widgets block, and that will retain all of the settings that you've created. So it's a great way of being able to move these things around without having to recreate them time to time. So for this example, let's just say I want to use sparkling categories. And that's fine. I'm not going to worry about changing the options on there. And say I'm a sparkling social widget. And I'm going to have recent comments. So you can see that our sidebar now that we've said that we want to work within that widgetized sidebar, and we've chosen this particular sidebar to be included, will now have these three particular blocks included in it. So we could create a, a different page, and we could use homepage widget one, and we're going to have a completely different set of options available to you in there. Now you're kind of thinking maybe, why would you want to do this? Well. A good example would be, let's just say you've got a website that doesn't necessarily use a right-hand navigation block, but you have a pile of services that your, your website offers. You know, If you're a plumber, you could have five or six different services that you offer. So what would be good is when you go to a page that has 
a overview of your services or you're looking at a specific service, say for example boiler servicing, then you could have down the right hand side of those pages all the related pages to the services. So you could have the other four services that you offer so people can quickly navigate through to that without having to use your main navigation. You know, the, the reasons why you'd use this are probably endless, but that's a good example. So then you could have a widgetized sidebar, you could put your own specific navigation elements in there that don't apply to other pages, so you can kind of customize certain pages to have different layouts. I'm sure you can find your own ways of, of you know, implementing this and own reasons for doing it, but that's just a good example of why you'd use it. So what we're doing now is we'll switch back over to the site, we'll have a look at the page, and we'll see that we've now got these widgets available to us in that particular page. So we switch over to the site and there's our page we created. And as you can see now down the right hand side is our own custom sidebar. Now you can see there's a few things I haven't set up in there, but it gives you an example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back in, create a second page, put different sidebar in there just so I can show you how this works. So I'm quickly jump back to the site. I'm gonna populate this home page widget one because we're gonna reference that. And we'll just say you want search. We'll have pages. And we'll put our archives in there, it doesn't really matter what they are. And we don't need to save that. If we make any changes to these, give them names. So we'll just call this Pages Archives. And we'll just save those. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly jump over now, create a new page and reference that. So we'll just go over to Pages, Add New. And we'll just call this one sidebar two. Switch visual composer on, add element, add a row. Split that off. And this time we'll do it the opposite way around. So we'll say we want the widgetized sidebar on the left hand side this time. And we'll just click, say we want widgetized sidebar. We'll choose home page widget one, which is the one we've just set up. And we'll just drop a text box in there so we've got some text. Set that to be full width and hit publish. And then we'll switch over, we'll take a look at this page and we'll see how instead of the first sidebar page where we've got the widgetized sidebar on the right hand side, the second one will have that on the left hand side with a whole different set of options. And then we can see. So that's all there is to creating widgetized sidebars, which allow you to customize what elements you have in any of your pages. It's a great way of working. It's a great way of getting creative with multiple different styles of navigation where you want full control over the page. and You don't necessarily want to use a default sidebar that the theme you're using may be actually offering you. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below. If you've got any comments, feedback, or questions, please pop those in the comment section. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But until next time, take care.